Welcome to the Sound of Movement podcast. Today we're talking about flexibility training and how you can make constant progress. We've put together a bunch of key lessons that were breakthroughs for us in our journey. These are methods that we learned as adults. We were not flexible as children, so stick around to learn more. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. Like Vasquez said in Aliens, let's rock, tribe. If you're new here, we got Rich behind the mix. Rad is across the table from me, and my name is Yanni Bormeister, and we are Unity Gym, experts at turning driven people into athletes. This episode is brought to you by the Unify Movement System, the only online program effectively balancing strength, flexibility, and fitness so you can unleash your inner athlete. Our promise to you is that they are the most efficient workouts. You will achieve more in 60 minutes than you ever thought possible. As a valued listener, use the link in the description to get your first month free. Uh, Also, guys, we are excited to announce that this weekend we have an epic 72-hour flash sale for our Flexibility Masterclass. It is one of the most groundbreaking flexibility programs you will ever try, and it is a specific program to level up the flexibility milestones for calisthenics and gymnastics training. Before we get started, warm welcome if you are catching us live on the YouTube channel. Uh, make sure that you leave a comment and we'll send you back some love. Remember, we want everybody to smash that like button and uh, help us get this stream in front of more legends just like yourself. And uh, of course, we want to send some love back to our UMS Movement Mastermind group and a big shout out to everyone who's catching us on the podcast replay. How are we today, guys? Yeah, good. Yeah, looking forward to... um wrapping up another week i'm pretty wrecked today from the at-home workouts it's been a very hard week for me doing peak week um so i'm looking forward to some recovery this weekend to be honest and peak next week. week is intense you should have seen if you guys aren't catching the uh the live at-home workouts that we stream in the mornings you really should it is absolutely intense and uh yeah rad's gone pretty hard on it mm-hmm. sure have got to lead by example so, That's right. right. <laughs> Throwing down every day for the tribe in lockdown, mm-hmm. and uh, we got we, we we had a record-breaking week this week. We had a record-breaking yeah, we week. A lot of people viewing a bunch of our um, workouts, which is great. Yeah, over twenty-five thousand people can't be wrong. Twenty-five thousand people around the world have tuned in and watched uh, the Phase Six workouts, and uh, they come from thirty-seven different countries, which is pretty amazing. Uh, we were pretty speechless when I looked at those uh, stats. We had over th- thirty-three hundred people uh, in one twenty-four hour period on the Tuesday workout this week, and we broke the record of the most amount of live concurrent viewers at one hundred and seventy-eight. Uh, people on the live workout and uh, 123 likes during the workout, which was pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. We're pretty stoked about all of that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so this week, today, we're bringing our flexibility uh, uh, training sort of, I guess you'd say, um, 10 commandments in for a landing. And uh, we had a great series, great podcast last week uh, talking about the five key points from our flexibility blueprint. Remember, Tribe, if you want to get your hands on the flexibility blueprint, you can do that. It is free and uh, complimentary for you. There's a link in the description of this video or this podcast. Uh, And all of our blueprints are our biggest lessons that we apply, the principles that we apply to all of our programming and our nutrition coaching so um get it why not today we're going to be talking about uh we're going to we're going to debunk some myths about how hard you should stretch and that's very very important uh because um you know we we framed up the the actual adaptation process of of flexibility and getting more flexible flexibility training uh and so it's very important to understand um, how hard you should be pushing your stretches for best results. We're also going to really um, talk about the difference between flexibility and mobility. That was a bit of a breakthrough for us and learning how to uh, use both uh, stretching and mobility training to continually progress your flexibility. Uh, we're going to be talking about the secrets to avoiding plateaus and injury uh, when you're trying to get more flexible. It's very, very common that people overload their bodies and don't, uh, con- don't, don't consider stretching or flexibility training as a load 
uh, to the body and therefore it's quite easy to overdo it. Uh, and we'll talk about the secret to gaining flexibility and strength together, which is very, very important. And finally, uh, probably the, the, the one thing that's had the biggest breakthrough for us mm -hmm. uh, and, yep. and, um, and who we've been um, privileged to work with to achieve those breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, look, the the first one of um, how hard should you stretch, this is something that a lot of people uh, get wrong, and I'm just trying to send Richard a couple of pictures so that he can bring some some things up on the, um, on the stream here. But I certainly got it wrong, and it's something that, um, you know, when you get it wrong, it, it takes you back several steps uh, at best and it's it's really in your best interest to learn um, how to get this right Richie when you get um, these three pictures that I've just sent through to you can you just bring up the one of me doing the splits um, so, so excuse me <coughs> oh sorry I swallowed something the wrong way there um, yeah it's um, I think there's a the, the, uh, look before we really went deep into this flexibility thing and started learning about um, about it. I didn't. I really didn't understand how hard you should stretch. I thought that you were meant to just really go for it and push yourself, and I didn't know why I kept taking one step forward and one step back. And it's because I was stretching too hard um, and also doing it um, too often. I, I think uh, it, before you dive through it too quickly, I think it's really, really common. I certainly found it myself because flexibility adaptation is not as linear as strength adaptation or cardiovascular adaptation and so you can get quite frustrated and your immediate like thought process at least mine and i don't know if anyone else can relate to this i'm sure you can is i mustn't be pushing hard enough mm. you know like i mustn't yeah. be doing it hard enough because it yeah. you know when you're new to sort of flexibility uh, uh, training it is quite an uncomfortable experience and you and you know someone who like me who's really had grown quite accustomed to training to a very high intensity whether it was through my boxing and and cardio training or through my sort of little dabbling in in bodybuilding and and powerlifting and things like that you know you you go yeah you've got to, you, you form this real mentality that you've just got to go hard or go home train real really hard all the time and uh, just get your recovery right and then you'll adapt and get stronger and whatever but when it comes to flexibility it really throws all that out the window because if you push too hard, you literally stifle the process of flexibility adaptation. You know, why don't you give a quick recap to um, uh, to what that is? What what's going on? Well, you're really delaying the inhibitors in the brain when you train flexibility. So you have our brain has these inhibitors in there that prevent us from going past a certain range of motion, and it's a safety mechanism. So it basically it tightens up the muscles to prevent joints from dislocating or ligaments from tearing. Like you don't want, um, the muscles are designed to take um, the load in a different way than what the ligaments are. And if you bring, you know, muscles are, are quite elastic by nature, but ligaments aren't. So if you get to a point where you start putting load on the ligaments and the ligaments start pulling in a way that they're not meant to, that's when you're in a lot of trouble. So the brain has these inhibitors that prevent that. And the way they do it is by tightening the muscle when it gets to a certain range. And what you do with flexibility training is you del you teach the brain to delay when those inhibitors kick in. And that process is stifled when you um, go to the point of pain and actually cause injury. And the way that the injuries that are most common that come from stretching are torn muscles. And there's all different types of grades of tears. So I've torn the muscles, mostly in my adductors. I actually tore recently, I tore my hamstring or, um, or calf and I'm still recovering from that. It doesn't stop me doing anything except being able to go to full range of motion on a dorsiflex forward fold stretch. Like that's the only thing that I can't do properly at the moment because when I try and push myself, I can just feel that I've got a muscle tear behind my knee. So I don't know if it's my hamstring or my calf because it's behind my knee, but it's a very minor tear because if I do anything else, I don't even know that it's there. So these tears happen um, at least if you do the kind of flexibility training that we do, they happen more often than you'd, than you'd imagine. But when you learn this principle, you can avoid them because when you do tear a muscle, you shouldn't be stretching it to full range of motion. It's not to say that you shouldn't stretch it at all. I actually asked Phil this question a couple of years ago. I said, 
should I not stretch now that I've torn this muscle? Because my understanding is that when you stretch, you're pulling the muscle fibers apart and they're trying to repair. And he said, no, you, sh you shouldn't do that. You should stretch, but you should only do it at a level that doesn't aggravate the injury. Exactly the same approach to any other muscle tear or any other injury. You should still do the activity. You just don't do it in a way that makes the injury um, worse because otherwise you'll adapt to not doing um, uh, to not doing anything. So yeah, it's a um, it's a, so that's the mechanism of flexibility. The mechanism of flexibility is just delaying when the inhibitors kick in. And to summarize everything that I just said, when you go to the point of pain and you cause yourself muscle tears, you inhibit that response by reinforcing that what the brain was trying to do was the right thing to do. It's trying to prevent the it movement. It was trying to prevent the movement and you reinforce that it should have prevented the movement. So that's this idea of how hard should you stretch. It, it's you, that you shouldn't stretch to the point of pain because the point of pain is um, usually where you've caused, you know, at best micro tears. And yeah. at best, usually what happens is what you experience is that you'll do a stretching session and you get to a, let's call it 120 degrees on your middle splits and you're feeling really good because you've never done that before. And then the next day you try and do it again and you can barely get to 90 degrees. That is a perfect example of you having gone too far and the body is now inhibiting that movement even more than it was the day before. And so that's the next question that people always ask is, how do I know when I've gone to the point of pain? I can't tell you that because pain is subjective. My five out of 10 pain might be your eight out of 10. Um, and and that, cha that, that subjectiveness changes with the adaptation rate and mm -hmm. response, you know, as you build, and if you're doing it properly, and we're gonna talk about this in a sec, the concept of lengthening and thickening the muscle body at, at, at the same time as opposed to just lengthening it. And we did tip on that last week. If you're doing it properly, then your tolerance and how hard you can push is going to increase over time. You yep. know? There's two things that you said there that I think are really, really important. One is, first of all, that your body is constantly adapting to what you're doing. So if you're not, if you stop, if you, if you injure yourself and you think, okay, I'm going to take time off, then your body will adapt to that time off very quickly. Within a couple of weeks, you'll find that you will have lost capacity. You will have lost load capacity. You will have lost workout tolerance, load tolerance, and uh, you go backwards. So it's, it's, it's incredibly important that people understand that. Mm -hmm. And then the second is that uh, in, in most cases, uh, the, the, the plateau or the reason why people aren't progressing in flexibility week on week is because they're not getting the dosage, the intensity, the volume right. They're either going too frequently on areas of the body that need more recovery. Uh, and I have a general rule of thumb, which is quite simple. The more you load the tendons and ligaments in an, in an awkward position, a middle splits is a very good example of this. All of the tendons and ligaments that are on the inner part of the knee, the medial part of the knee, get loaded excessively during a middle splits training. Mm -hmm. They need more time to, uh, to adapt and recover. And so middle splits training generally needs a lot more time to adapt and recover than something like front splits training. Um, and, and so I say, you know, uh, flexibility training for the thoracic area, the spine, the shoulders is usually a lot more tolerant to regular stimulus than flexibility training for something like the middle splits, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because the shoulders are just a, a, a joint that can generally cope with it more. And that's why we say like daily shoulder mobility is really important. And, and when you start to think about it in that way, you start to think, wow, like this, it makes so much sense why people adapt and lose flexibility and mobility when they don't stretch and they sit in a chair, for instance. You're constantly adapting. Your body is constantly adapting, but it's adapting to what you're exposing it to most. Mm -hmm. you know and so you need to really really think about that and let that sort of simmer in your in, in in the forefront of your mind for a while you know if you're if you spend a lot of time a disproportionate amount of your time in a chair on a computer then you have to understand that that you more than anyone else have to prioritize movement in a way that's go going to offset that you know mm -hmm. and that's one of the biggest reasons why the UMS program is so powerful because it builds a habit of daily it's a daily dose of really healthy exercise. And yes, we don't train uh, to the intensities that some people train in every exercise session, but it's more powerful, I believe, and we get better results because we're exposing people to something that's offsetting the, the, the degenerative 
adaptations that are occurring in their life from what they're what, what they're doing outside of the gym much more effectively mm. and you know the you, before we wrap up on how hard should you stretch the like if you do stretching properly you can you can experience stretching doms but if you do it properly you won't you'll very rarely if ever experience that feeling of pain and um, muscle tearing and feeling like the next day you're worse than you were the day before. It doesn't really happen. And if you, Richard, can you bring up that um, picture of me doing the splits with my feet up on the box? Have you got that there? Yeah. I, this is just a picture showing, this is when I was warmed up and we were doing a photo shoot for some of our um, videos on YouTube and um, this was not an uncomfortable position for me when I was warmed up, but I had to spend, uh, like I basically did this at the end of a flexibility workout. If you saw me at the start of the same workout, um, I wasn't close to that. I had to really, like, like I basically went through a whole middle splits workout from our flexibility masterclass. But the idea is that when you if you just stretch for what's comfortable for you you unlock levels of flexibility that you only dreamt of before and i in the past i would i just found my experience with training for the middle splits really um really painful and stifled all the time by all these little injuries and two steps forward one step back and the way that i train now is all i do is just on a daily basis i just go to wherever my body wants to go to and I've really learned what the point of pain and the point of discomfort is. And it, that's through trial and error. And all I do is just work within that area of discomfort, but something that, you know, a little, uh, that was my first time I got a Chester floor pancake. That took me about five years to get Chester floor pancake as a, um, um, as an adult. I, uh, it, that, was, that was a very, very long journey for me. But again, it happened when I, I wasn't really pushing myself. I was basically just doing that pancake stretch between my handstands just to make up for some lost time. And one day I just went, oh crap, I've got my chest to the floor now. you know. Um, whereas when I used to really push myself and I was always just focused on hitting certain milestones. Let's save that one, Richard. We're gonna bring that one up in a minute, mate. That's uh, got some relevance to what we're gonna be talking about later. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's, that's, uh, that's the topic of how hard you should stretch. Um, next point is what flexibility versus mobility is. What's, uh, what's the difference between flexibility and mobility? And um, this is something that I, um, when I started going down this flexibility journey, I couldn't find any good um, examples of it. After a while, I started to think that mobility was like modern day type stretching and flexibility was like old school, reach forward and try and touch your toes for 30 seconds or a minute. But it's not true at all. I think a lot of people out there either don't understand what flexibility versus mobility is or they don't know how to explain it. And the best explanation that I got, I'm ripping it straight out of a book called Overcoming Gravity by a guy named Stephen Lowe, I think his name is. And it's one of the best books that I've read because it's by a guy who was in a, uh, a national level gymnastics champion in America. I'm pretty sure that was like his, his level of um, achievement. But he's also a physiotherapist. So he's gone to university and he understands how to explain things in a really, really good, um, very scientific way, which I haven't seen somebody with that level of skill and also that level of uh, education um, before. No, at least not in, I mean, they, they're out there, of course, but I'm just saying for something that everybody can go and buy the book, it's, it's really good. And he says, uh, mobility is basically an umbrella term for anything that takes your joint through full range of motion. So anything where your joint goes through full range of motion is considered mobility, but you've got to understand that it's when it goes through full range of motion. If you're only doing 20, 80% of your range of motion, that's not effective mobility training. It's when you go through full range of motion. Flexibility training is a whole bunch of different techniques that are designed to increase mobility. So that might sound confusing. So mobility is going through full range of motion, flexibility is to increase mobility. Well, no, when you think about it more logically, so if I go and do a middle splits workout where I'm doing loaded eccentrics and loaded isometrics and end range strength 
um, to strengthen opposing muscle groups in end ranges. All of those exercises are to increase my middle split so that I have more mobility. Make sense? Whereas mobility training is generally done much lighter usually at the start or end of your workout, so like a mobility warm-up, for example, or a mobility cool-down, or on your day off when you're not doing anything and you just do a bit of really light mobility training. Whereas flexibility training is the kind of thing where you do sets and reps and uh, you need to recover from it. It's not something you can do every day and it's something that you, you get a sweat going and it takes time. You've got to commit to it. It's like a workout. Yeah. And that what I think one of the big things about um, that's really important to understanding with mobility versus flexibility is that mobility can be very, very simple. Like, uh, you know, I, I will go on a walk uh, often regularly and I will stop in a nice place and I'll do a bit of mobility training. And, and it's just, you know, a deep squat. I have a whole bunch of little mobility routines and drills that I do for the lower extremities, legs and upper extremities, arms and shoulders. And you can do it in as little as 30 seconds a minute. You know, you can just do little drills. It's just about getting your body into those deep <coughs> positions uh, that you're comfortable with, that you've developed the flexibility in as regularly as possible, mm -hmm. you know, and gently. You don't force mobility, you know. Uh, you can push mobility if you warm up and if you repeat the same movements, you'll find that your flexibility starts to open up. You can push it, push it, push it. But it's just a really nice thing to get in the habit of doing on a regular basis. Yep. And uh, yeah, it's, I think it's, it's really, really important that people understand the difference between the two and start to prioritize both of them. You know? yeah, and they both have a, a, really, a really good place in um, your training week if you want to become more flexible or more mobile. Um, but I would say if anybody said, well, what should I do if I've only got a limited amount of time? I'd do mobility training any day if I only had a limited amount of time. Yeah. Um, we've people around the world have had their biggest breakthrough with flexibility from doing our 18 minute stretching routine or 18 minute mobility routine, because that's what they are. They're just a really easy all over body mobility routine that hit all your joints in, in all their, um, movements. And that will have a greater impact on your life, on your training, on your ability to prevent injury than flexibility training. Flexibility training is much more about getting to that real upper level, elite level of flexibility that some people want. I certainly um, wanted it and I'm not like, I, don't, I couldn't compete in a gymnastics class or a dance class, but I could hold my own and um, I've gotten a level of flexibility that's far greater than most people and that's enough for me now. So. I don't actually do that much flexibility training anymore. And that's a good thing because that that's what training should be. You should be able to hit a point with your training where you can move on to something else. Yep. Um, otherwise, you don't have the opportunity to explore new things. And there was a time, and that's how we created the flexibility masterclasses when I was really committed to flexibility training. But I achieved a result that I wanted and now it's actually very easy to ma for me to maintain it by um, doing probably about you know, 10% or 15% of the work that I had to had to do to get there. Well, that's very common. That's very normal. Yep. And yeah, I've heard the best examples I've had of people explaining the levels of flexibility that we have and maintain at uh, at Unity Gym. I'm not sure if you're aware, Richard, but the light over here isn't turned on. Um, is uh, is um, I've gone to workshops and in workshops that I've done with professional hand balancers and people like that, it, um, they, they often will say it's very rare that you come across someone with so much muscle mass and strength that's so flexible. Yeah. We're, we're very flexible for what we do and yep. it complements what we do perfectly. But when you put, if you put us against a professional ballet dancer or even a professional gymnast, who's been working on it since childhood, hmm. we wouldn't compare. Yeah, We'd look stiff, you know? But against an average person, when you put us next to an, a, 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 an average person, we look super flexible, you know? And uh, even, even um, uh, compared to other personal trainers. Uh, so, but, but what we do complements, what we have achieved complements what we do very, very nicely. And that's what it's all about, you know? Uh, but what, what th this sort of brings us to the next point, it's a good segue into the next point, which is that um, one of the reasons why most people don't ever achieve the desired flexibility that they're trying to achieve is that they don't treat it with the same 
principles that they treat their strength or cardiovascular training. And just like anything else, if you want to run a marathon, you don't start running a marathon. You start running 5Ks and then you build up to 10Ks and then you build up to 15 and keep going and that's called progressive overload. If you want to bench press 140, uh, you know, 150 pounds, or 200 pounds, that's what's that, 100 kilos, 200 pounds, roughly? 220 220. pounds. If you want to bench press 220 pounds, you don't start by bench pressing 220 pounds. Mm -hmm. You start by maybe bench pressing uh, 80 pounds, 60 mm -hmm. pounds, and then slowly building up over time using you know, ma the manipulation of different loading variables, which is referred to as progressive overload. But the idea is that the workouts get harder over time. And this ties into what we mentioned at the start, as you adapt, your body becomes more resilient to the stimulus and you need to come at it with new stimulus, harder stimulus. Some of the variables that, you, that, that we use, uh, stretching intensity, the volume that you put the body under every day, or, uh, and that includes frequency of different um, dosages of exercise, the recovery time that you spend between uh, stretching sessions. In my later period of, of uh, flexibility training, I find that more recovery works better for me because I'm stretching harder in my workouts. Mm -hmm. And so I find that sometimes when I have a week or two away from flexibility training, unless I really, really hammer myself with strength training during that time or running, which tends to stiffen up the body. But if I just go and recover and have a, a bit of time off, I often come back more flexible than I was before. You know, I, I can hit deeper positions. And finally, stretching complexity, that the types of exercises you choose uh, to to um, uh, stretch with or, or train flexibility training, all of those things need to level up. And so, you know, those people who um, a, a really good example is like, you know, the the routines that we um, provide, the the eighteen minute routines and things like that, they're amazing. And 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 for us, they delivered an incredible result. And we use them for almost a year. You know, probably too long, maybe six months too long. Uh, because we all started to plateau and then we started to develop our flexibility masterclasses because we started learning off other people, which is going to segue into the final point we're going to talk about today. But, you know, it's so important that people understand that flexibility training is just like every other modality of exercise. You've got to level it up. Mm -hmm. You've got to progress it. You've got to use progressive overload to make sure that you achieve your result. And I've heard so many people say, you know, I've done a really great flexibility program, but I, I, I capped it out and I just don't think genetically my body is able to get more flexible. Bullshit. Yeah. It's, it's because your program has limitations. Even the best programs in the world are limited if you keep doing it over and over again. You know, yep. like any workout, at some point you're going to plateau and you're going to need to level it up. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Look, the, the third the point that we're going to talk about today is... Um, no, it's the fourth. No, the fourth point. point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, the fourth point. Um, this is actually uh, very relevant to you, Oscar. You've asked a question here. Uh, I got a shoulder injury months ago, and now I'm kind of scared to stretch it too much. I'm fine now, but my mind stops me a bit. My answer to that, I've just written in the comment, was strength training is much more important than stretching for injury rehab. I've had two of the most horrendous shoulder injuries that you um, – uh, that you can get a slap tear and torn rotator cuff uh, on both of my shoulders. One on the right side, rehabilitated that one, then one on the left. And in athletes, they require surgery. And I did it without surgery. And during the, at least the first six months of that rehab, I didn't do a single stretch on my shoulders. It's not what you do at the early stages. But then you've responded by saying, thanks, man, I'll focus on strength then from now on. And my response to that was the balance between flexibility and strength is more important. And I want to, it, it, it goes perfectly into this point because th this point is how do you build a balance of strength and flexibility together? And I can't emphasize to you guys enough how important this is. For, for what do you reckon, 15 years as being personal trainers, um, what we did was, what I, and we have a lot of experience with seeing what other trainers do because we worked as personal trainers in big gyms where we were looking at what other people do and our friends in the industry. And people that really, compared to the average person, would be considered at a very high level of um, just fitness, athleticism, you know, the physique that they have. Like, you know, you talk about people within our circle. 
Um, and the way that people train, generally speaking, is like they'll, they'll say, I want to be able to do this. I, I want to get better at running or I want to get stronger. I want to do this. And they put all their eggs in that basket. And then after usually about 12 weeks, they'll start going, oh, man, I'm feeling really stiff. I think I need to do a little bit more flexibility training. And you just have this um, life cycle where one <laughs> thing gets better while the other gets worse and then the other gets better while the other gets worse. Yeah. And you're always going forward in one and backwards something's in the other. Something's always being neg neglected and something's always being prioritized. And, 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 and that's what we did. We would, yeah. we would go, all right, I'm going to do a cycle of this. And then you'd get to the end of it and you'd go, oh, my God, I'm so stiff. I need to focus on some foam rolling for a while. And you'd get a little bit of relief. And... And we, we basically, um, we stumbled onto the UMS and what it is and the way that it happened, the way that we figured out how to become strong and flexible is that I was basically, I made the decision to become flexible and I started working with people and learning how to do it and all my training was revolved around flexibility. But then I could see, because I was really wanting to learn calisthenics, that I was also not strong enough and I needed to really put it, some work into strength training. And so I was doing two workouts a day. I was doing a strength workout and then a flexibility workout and we didn't have the time for anything. And then I was trying to do all my strength training first and then all my flexibility training. And that was in one workout and that took three hours and I was just wrecked by the end of it. And so I just started saying to myself, I'm just gonna do one set of strength and then one set of flexibility. And through doing that and having Yanni, Richard and Phil and all of us looking at the way that I was training and going, oh, you know, that stretch is probably interfering with this. We worked out a way that we could do strength training and flexibility training at the same time without interfering with each other. And the, the, in the nuts and guts of it, it's a, you, you train your upper body for strength training while you do your lower body for flexibility. And then because we were forced to turn it into one hour workouts because that's all our members were able to do, it took us years to strip back to the fundamentals of strength and flexibility because we had all these things that we wanted our members to be able to do and we used to include handstand training in the classes and we, we used to in include movement training like locomotion and flow and we used to include all these different stuff. But we could see that people weren't actually achieving any real success in anything and so we stripped it right back down until all it was was strength and flexibility one to one. And then, of course, what we noticed was that people weren't fit. People weren't very fit. And we found a way to include fitness in it as well. And we do that with circuits at the end of our workouts. And so what we've done is we've created this way where within one hour, when you do this balance of strength and flexibility and fitness, you actually get stronger, fitter and more flexible. Yes. There's, there's no two steps forward, three steps back. At all. And, and the results speak for progress. themselves. We've got people all around the world that are, that are making progress in strength, flexibility and fitness all at the same time. It's all moving forward. Now, yes, you're not getting better at handstands. Yes, you're not getting better at X, Y or Z. But what it is, is exactly one hour and then you can choose, okay, I want to spend an extra 30 minutes doing this or I want to spend a little bit of time doing that. And, and that gives you the foundation, the, the fundamental strength, flexibility and fitness that you can then go and deploy. Well, this, this is the thing. I want to challenge what you just said then because 90%, 95% of our members, including our team here sitting in the room, actually do get better at handstands. They do get better at muscle ups. They do get better at planche. They do get better at levers. And the point, the reason is because of what you said at the end there, the formula that we've created produces a result that carries over to everything. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, the reason why people can't do those calisthenic skills is because they're, they're, they've got um, compromised flexibility or mobility. They've got compromised strength. Mm -hmm. uh, and, the, and, you know, practicing a skill when you've got a compromise that is fundamental to that skill, W most commonly with hand balancing, I'll use an example because it's very obvious. You don't have the shoulder flexibility or mobility to be able to stack yourself in a straight line. So it's a challenge for your body just to get you inverted upside down. You got Buckley's chance of holding it up there for more than a second or two with a horrible looking banana back with your legs going all over the place. You know, that's not a handstand. That's mm -hmm. just you kicking upside down and looking like you're really challenged, you know. And so, yeah, it really does. It really does uh, go a long way to work. And, um, and Oscar said there, I get it, find a balance. No, you don't have to find anything. Yep. You don't have to find anything. 
We found it for you. Yeah, work. <laughs> like, the, what's what is it? Isaac Newton that said, "If I can see further than others, it's because I stand on it's the shoulders of giants." It's in the email giants. I'm just about to send now. And yeah, that, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Yeah. Isaac Newton. You sh you should be leveraging what other people have discovered and not trying to reinvent the wheel yourself. And if honestly, Oscar, try our UMS online coaching. You can get a month free if you click the link um, in the description of all these things. If you don't like it, cancel it. You won't pay a cent. Um, but try it, man, and yeah, learn. My advice learn. Is don't try to find a balance. Learn how we've created it because, man, it took three people that are very smart that have been in, it's into not, training. It's not three people. It's yourself. How, how long have you been training for? 20 years, 25 years. Oh, something like that. Richard who's been training for the better part of, I don't know, he's only like 12 years old, so maybe four years, no, yeah. I'm kidding. Myself, uh, I think about 20 years, mm. maybe more, 26 years I worked out the other day. Phil, Nilesh, mm. we got Will out there. It's a collective 70, 80 years yeah. of training and coaching people. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it, it's, you, can't, you can't find that anywhere. Yeah. And because we all work together and we're all aligned and we're all feeding off each other, and now you've got the experience of our tribe, hundreds of people who have come through the program that we've learned from as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, it's, the, it's a very powerful mastermind. So, yeah, we, we, you know, we really say don't find anything. And this is the last point that I wanted to drive home today that we'll spend a, a moment on. We haven't, I know, we anymore. haven't made anything up. Like we, we are. All we've done is we've taken the lessons that we've learned from people that are better than us but distilled and it, it into down a formula and pulled it into a formula yeah and if you pull up richie the picture of joachim now this is my flexibility coach that i worked with for a year that and, ca and currently rad's working with roy gold yep. who's an amazing movement coach yeah, if you, you don't know. know who roy gold is go and check out on instagram type in roy gold uh he's absolutely phenomenal and that's who uh who i work with we of course you you need to work with people that are better than you and i'm a little bit further along on, on my journey than what most people are. So I have to work with people that are better than me. So this was my flexibility coach here, Joachim. Uh, he's absolutely phenomenal. You can check him out on Instagram. Um, uh, he's Hildeson Joachim on Instagram. Um, but yeah, look, the idea is guys that if you, if you really want to level up, then one day you're going to have to, you know, start working with someone. And the and beautiful, the beautiful thing is you don't have to do what we did. You don't have to spend 20 years, 26 years figuring this out because we, th you've got the internet now. Yep. You've got YouTube resources like this, the show, the podcast, our YouTube channel. There's plenty uh, of great YouTube uh, channel resources out there, you know, digest as much of the free content. There's people like our ass fitness FAQs, Daniel Vanier, they, we, we're all on a mission to give away better content than people charge for anyway. Mm -hmm. And once you exhaust that resource and you want to start customizing it for yourself, jump into the coaching groups. You, you know, all of the coaches that we work with now are not in our neighbors. It's not like the old days where you just tried to find the best person in your gym. Now you've got the whole world at your fingertips. You can literally find the best people in your field that you want to work with, you know. Uh, it's, it's a very, very special time in history that, that is unlike anything before, you know, and we are this big collective mastermind of uh, people all trying to achieve the same things. And that in and of itself is extremely powerful, yep. extremely powerful. Now, if you guys want to level up and get some serious flexibility, then for this weekend only, you have the opportunity to grab our incredibly effective flexibility masterclass at a great discounted price. And uh, there's also a very special offer for you if you uh, would like to try out our uh, revolutionary UMS Unified Movement System, um, if you grab that uh, that program, the Flexibility Masterclass. So watch out for Yanni's emails or go over to our Facebook group, UMS Online, no, UMS Movement Mastermind on Facebook and click the link. Yeah, we'll put we'll put the links up there and the links in my email that's coming out in just a sec. But that's all we got time for today, yeah, Tribe. We'll We're going to jump on over week. to our UMS yeah. Online Coaching Weekly Group Coaching Call. Uh, and uh, we will see you all next week. See you later, everyone. Health is about performance, not just body image. You better be willing to accept what you're going to have to do to get there. We'll start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, it's there forever. The body image goal doesn't get you that far. It's the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there. It's not the intensity.
There's no shortcut to mastery and movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. The gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.